Hey guys, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. It is a right miserable looking day outside. And I'm not supposed to go outside anyway, so let's talk about your guys' comments for Supernatural Season 15, Episode 13. You guys were... <laughs> this is like the first one all over again. There's some brutal comments in here. Obviously some um, comments about how the episode completely de delegitimizes lore and established con, like a retcon stuff again. Stuff I didn't even fucking notice because of just how ridiculous this retcon was. But admittedly when Ruby and what's her name teamed up, I was like, wait a minute, how did these two ever meet each other? It's a giant, giant retcon. And I think Eugene is Robert Singer's wife. She was one of the writers of this episode and she's just notorious, notorious for retconning stuff. So let's, we got nothing else better to do. So let's take a look and see how many comments you guys said. Oh, 51, jeez. Starting off with the first comment here, this is actually a positive one, so I, apparently there might not be many more of this one. Tonight's episode was actually interesting. I found the Eden scene intriguing in the sense of it brought back the mystique of the divine and the supernatural goodness feel to it versus the corporate feel of the angels and the heavens they present. That scene felt like they were expecting from heaven, what we expect from heaven and angels. I wonder who, who the little girl and the snake is. Eden's where humans can get their souls back. I thought the garden was we saw on the dark side of the moon was Eden. Or was that something else? Or is this another retcon? Will we get an Adam and Eve? Why does the Empty want to stop God? I get Billy. Also, does Amara know of above the Empty? And why didn't Amara know of death? Will they actually kill Chuck? Find it hard to believe. I feel like it goes uh, against the original point message of whatever the show is. Also, Chuck in Season 5 said we needed a hoard toilet paper due to the C-Virus, Croatone, and COVID, lol. Funny how Supernatural been on so long that they can connect aspects of it to real life events and stuff that happened to the actors. The plane issue they had on Jared's plane, they mentioned at Vegas Con connected to an earlier episode with the Phantom in the plane. To this stopping production, is Chuck destroying your our world with a virus? Damn it, was hoping for a meteor crash. I, I wouldn't want a meteor crash, bro. Meteor crash would be far, far worse than this COVID business. Quite funny how the whole Chuck hoarding the toilet paper has started to become a pretty big meme. And I'm noticing this amongst people who don't even watch Supernatural. So as long as people watch the first five seasons, that's cool. Now we're starting to get onto the uh, the critical ones here. Plot holes galore this episode. Ruby and sister Joe being buddies makes no sense because when Dean was raised from hell in season four, Ru Ruby didn't know about the angels. And even if she did, she was still scared shitless after seeing what they could do. Yes, I remember that. Why would she be having girl time with one of them? And didn't Joe fall in season 9 like the rest of the angels? So why was she on Earth during season 4 when apparently she had an assigned job in heaven during the time? Also, alternate reality Sam and Dean tell our Dean at the end of the episode that they saw the Impala and drove it while they were looking for the Occultum. How could they have seen and driven the car if Sam and Dean took it to the church where the occultum what? Yeah, actually, wait a minute, what the hell? But the thing that frustrated me the most about this episode was how misleading the promo was. Every single person I have seen talk about it on Twitter, as well as myself, thought this episode was going to be figuring out what to do with the other Sam and Dean. TV Guy even did a whole interview with Jared and Jensen, oh, I see where this is going, to talk about it. And then in the episode, they barely show up for more than five minutes. You could have cut them out entirely and nothing would have been missed. There are only two things that kept this episode from being a steaming pile of garbage for me. One being Jack's moment at the end after he gets his soul back. Alexander Cavett really pulled me into his performance there. I like the line that, where he said he should have understood their pain because his own mother died in reference to Mary's death. Yeah. If they bring back Mary, I will actually riot. Please, no. Yeah, please do not bring her back. And other saving grace was seeing Rachel Miner again. It sucked that it wasn't actual Meg. Yes, actually. Seeing her again was great. She's a character who actually, actually has stayed dead because Crowley killed her. She actually turned into one of my favorite characters, especially with Rachel Miner. The best Meg. Like, I like the first Meg. She was really good at being villainous, but the second Meg, she made it fun. It sucked that it wasn't Meg, but I'm just glad something actually managed to make me smile in this episode. And I really liked how they worked around her disability by giving her a throne to sit on because that's such a Meg thing. Oh yeah, I forgot she has MS. That's why she isn't acting right now. 
I think it's MS. But no, that's actually, that's a good point. That's unfortunate, but I'm so happy to have seen her again. So we have to write a story about Jack getting his soul back. Let's make an utter mess. Let's have fun and make a self-parody of our usual writing. I like that. Thanks to the actors, though. It's pointless that their wives are on the show. They ended Ruby's character so perfectly, and it was so unnecessary to bring her back. And Danielle's character, what the fuck? This is supposed to be the best season. Instead, they're wasting their time giving their wives pointless screen time. I'm not going to disagree because it's not wrong because I don't understand what the point of those, like their cameos in this episode just, I didn't get it. It, it, it was fan service to the nth degree. Also, is God Sitter not even batting an eye at what her brother's been up to? She must sense it or something, damn. Must be an amazing vacation she's on. Kinda wonder, yeah, where is Amara? I'm very curious because they are going to run into some issues with getting her if they haven't already filmed her yet because she's on The Mandalorian, right? Well, she was in the first season. I'm kinda curious to see if she's gonna be in the second season. She's the Forge Master, right? So, I'm kinda curious to see how they're gonna work around because I imagine her money went up. If this was par for the course for season 15, Bring back old characters in a way that absolutely makes no sense through retcon. It's not even worth picking apart anymore. For places that used to be near impossible to get out of, they sure are making a hell, <laughs> make getting out of hell and and the empty a breathe. They're like revolving doors. Like hell, it was the fr it was the same set even like when they went in and they're like, yeah, this was a trap. Like I said when my review, this episode had like the mentality of an ADHD Simpsons modern day episode. Just next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. It was so irritating. Nothing in the story mattered. It just kept moving on to the next thing. You're right, Eden was already established in season five and the scene with Joshua was glorious. Hey, but let, hey, let's let <laughs> let's retcon it anyways. Also, Joe saying that she likes Padalecki's vessel more than the blonde referring to Catherine and Cassidy felt unnecessary and mean-spirited. I kind of thought that was interesting too. I don't know why they were so mean to Cassidy. Like, Ruby has two totally different characters. She has season three Ruby, which is this really kind of cool anti-hero. Like, she really nailed the Cassidy girl. She really nailed this line of, can you trust her? You never really could, but she was reliable, but the knife, remember the knife being like, holy shit, you can kill a demon with a knife. That was huge, being a witch and all this other stuff. Season four was a totally different Ruby, totally different character. But I didn't complain because she realized she had to get on Sam's side. The scene where Dean was playing with a rubber band made me laugh, even the characters are losing interest in the plot. I'm actually kind of don't know what that is. I imagine it's when they were t sitting around the table all discussing stuff going on. And I imagine Dean's just there with like, I, I can't remember this part, but I imagine that would have been funny. It takes alcohol to get through this episode. Ooh. <laughs> Jeez. I, I haven't gotten to there yet because I'm holding off on this COVID thing keeps going. Wasn't terrible, but now I feel like Supernatural is the Jack show. He's the only one getting character development in this thing and the whole plot depends on what he is going to do or not. And it's a bad sign. Aren't the Winchesters supposed to be the heroes here? Why everything on why everything on the plot depends on Jack's decisions? Because he is not a good character. Jack should have never existed. They should have brought Jesse, the Antichrist, to fill the role. Just saying. I've seen this comment actually a couple of times. You guys know that he is essentially the Antichrist character brought back because that was an episode that Dab wrote, co-wrote. Jack is essentially that character. They didn't want to bring the Jesse kid back because it's such a huge random bring back. That would have been kind of more so of a fan service you bring back. This is a legitimate way of doing it. They actually did establish how they brought Jack about and yeah of course he's got character development. He's only been in the show for like two seasons. Sam and Dean have been there for 15 now and their character development stopped in like season 8. And then season 11 too actually they were just kind of witnesses to what was going on in season 11 and I actually didn't mind that, again, because I thought the season, I thought the show was going to end season 11. Seeing it here, I, I, I'm not complaining that Jack is, like, a key part of the show. He has to be, something has to be going on. And I also wouldn't call it the Jack show either, because he's been gone since, well, he was gone for almost 10 episodes. And then he got resurrected again for the third time <laughs> in less than three seasons. I disagree. I thought the entire scene of alternate Sam and Dean talking to real Sam and Dean was absolutely hilarious. 
The same with the busy, busty Asian beauties part. I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was the second best behind the pool house episode. Ooh, buddy. I respect your opinion, but no. In my opinion, this was not better, as good as the pool house episode. There's been a few episodes much better than this one. This was not a good episode. This is bad writing. This is very bad writing. Ooh, this is a this is a harsh one here. Can we just rename this episode Couples Reunion? There are so many reasons for Joe and Ruby's storyline that makes no sense. The only thing that they have in common is being married to the brothers in real life. I guess that the pair up was a success. If their goal was to entertain me with adorable irony. Anyways, watching this episode felt like a sitcom without the laugh track. Couldn't tell if the humor was self-aware or re really just flat. Like the characters were giving a beat of silence hoping they'd chuckle. Which is unfortunate because I feel like Jensen and Jared have proven their ability to be really funny and emotional and the script just restricts them. But 80% of this episode was just slow moving storyline and fan service cameos. Regrettably will admit I kind of enjoyed but I didn't think it helped the story. I still don't get death always being so vague. Especially since he consistently reminds everyone that they are under time constraints. That actually that's a good point. If you wanted to be getting done you need to be clear. A bit of a jerk move to withhold info unless she doesn't know what the occultum is either. Nearly thought of they pull a Pulp Fiction and never actually reveal to the audience what the super weapon being a MacGuffin would have been completely unlikely at this point. It turns out it was just Dean Eden though. So how is there not a single bit of lore on that? Last scene had me a little more moved Jack getting his soul back, takes it away his new character, but crying over Mary was personally the most attention grasping scene and leads Jack and Dean's relationship to a predictable but resolved ending. Yeah, yeah, no, that's... Man, I was so tuned out by the end. <laughs> no one is talking about how... No one is talking about that there is now two Sans and Deans in the main universe. Well, no, because they went back, did they not? Oh god, I really, really enjoyed this episode. Yes, it was slow, but in a good way. It wasn't slow, though, that's the thing. It was just kept on going. It barely stayed on anything for any amount of time that it was so boring. This is the first time I've watched one of your reviews. I will also be my last. Supernatural happens to be my favorite show for the last 15 years, and I don't appreciate it. Someone like you putting it down! <laughs> well, he, well, he is a very critical reviewer and quite objective. I love it when people do that because they think they're gonna wreck me. Oh buddy, you have no idea how much shit I went through through season 12 and 13. I, I figured out a way to just turn that toxicity and like turn it on its head and like, yes, give me your comments, give me your hate because I will break you. I will prove my point. Well, I guess this is how the Winchesters go out. Getting sick by coronavirus. I mean the characters, not the actors. I won't hold my breath for the rest of this shit show. Woo! So accurate. It was an okay episode and certainly better than last week's snooze fest, but it somehow still managed to ring hollow. I kept picturing how funny alternate Sam and Dean would have been under Crypt Key's watch. Edlund, anyone? Yep, that Edlund. These writers want to be able to churn out soulless drivel disguised as an instant classic. The ingredients are there, but the measurements were wrong. That's actually a really good point. Good way to describe it, too. Completely agree. It feels more like a filler episode. Not sure how it's possible to have episodes that give us nothing for a whole 40 minutes and episodes that feel rushed through. I did at least like the Eden part, even though I thought the snake was supposed to be Lucifer and maybe Joshua was the little girl. Anyways. We can't expect the writers to actually remember facts of their own show. Jeremy, do you feel like season 15 has gotten better or worse since the first few episodes? Honestly, no. It's been a middle of the damn road. The only good episodes that have been have been when they brought Eileen back as, as well as the uh, Michael one and the Pool House episode. But honestly, that's it. It's been very mediocre throughout essentially and it has it has been very mediocre throughout this season i really enjoyed this the episode seeing ruby back was cool yeah it was fan servicey but pretty cool my issue and i've seen other people mention how has ruby met anel since anel came into the picture when the angels fell i'm excited to see what comes next just hoping they come back soon i've got a lot of comments across the board saying that sam and dean went to eden it wasn't eden it was sam and dean's wanted to see some people saw the Garden of Eden, others see God's throne room. For you, I believe this is the botanical gardens where you went on a field trip with your kids. Thank you for clearing that up. It, to the episode, it was okay. It felt like it kind of rushed and you could cut 90% of it out and still get a story. At least Billy didn't have her plastic Halloween prop with her, the scythe. That music when they enter hell, though, I was half expecting Phantom of the Opera to 
appear in front of them. Anyway, yeah, it was pretty much the Jack show now. Sam and Dean are just side characters. I was hoping it wasn't going to be, but because the show started with Sam and Dean, that's how it should end. But nope, they've got the Golden Boy Jack. Again, you guys, they do need something to actually end this. Like, I, it's not the Jack show. Sure, he's getting character development, but that's because there's nothing left for the brothers. They, they, they don't have any character development left, so they have to do this. <sighs> wow, though. Shit, I talked for 20 minutes. Hopefully I can edit this down. But anyways, guys, thank you again for your comments. Obviously, we won't be seeing any for a while. Um, I might try and review a Supernatural Season 2 episode today. But I'll have to check my schedule because I'm just so busy. Anyways, thank you guys again. Stay safe, wash your hands, and let's get all through this together. Especially for you guys in the States. I know you definitely are going through a rougher time than us Canadians now with all the numbers. So practice social distancing, guys. It's hurting right now. I've lost all of my weddings up until June. Like, I've got one left in June that so far hasn't canceled. But aside from that, I've lost a lot of my business for this year. But I'm still sticking to this whole staying inside thing. So make sure you do too. It's all for me. If you like this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Uh, and also, if you uh, feel like you don't like my comments, make sure to leave a comment about it saying you won't come back. <laughs> Sorry, those always crack me up. Anyways, see you guys next time.